officially relocated. It's been one week since I left Nigeria and happy new year. May would make it six months since I've been in this country. Pray that everything just turns out for my good. I can't wait to get my own place. My parents will be so proud of me. This land is giving me blessings. <laughs> I'm so happy. Oh my god. We hit 1,000 subscribers today. We're on 1.2k as at now. This is my first interview ever. I bought my first car today, you guys. Well, this is the last time you guys are ever going to see me in this place. I got a job. Yeah, I happen to have bought a ticket to fly somewhere. I got hired at Sephora. I took the test and I passed. This is the brand that we're working with this year. This time next week, I will be in my new apartment. Nick's um, extended their partnership with me. Welcome to my home, officially. I did not get the other job. I broke my glasses. Yes, I'm probably about to tear up. Oh my God. Well, there were times where I would just cry. He announced the finalists of the Sephora squad and I didn't get it. Because I had been applying to jobs, some were not forthcoming. I got my first offer on the last day of February that I had to reject. It's 2023 and oh, the last time we saw each other was 2017. Cheers to Billy Bay in Dallas. Everybody say Beyonce! Happy birthday to you. is grateful thank you so much thank you for all the prayer i'm really grateful to god i would never ever ever get tired of saying thank you Whew, finally welcome to my life update video if you're watching this today is my one year anniversary of relocating to the United States. I'm going to try my possible best not to cry because I don't intend to make this video an emotional one. If per adventure it swings that way, well, not my fault, but yeah, this is it. It's one year since being in the United States. It's hard to believe. I honestly cannot believe that it's already a year. So we're going to start this video and I'm going to take you guys on a journey. Let's get into this life update video, finally. Let's start from the very, very beginning, why I left Nigeria. This relocation or this move was about time that it happened. Like it was going to happen anyway. It was meant to happen earlier, but I kept pushing it because I felt like I was kind of getting good grounds as a beauty influencer in Nigeria or a content creator in Nigeria. And so I kept pushing it forward and I kept saying, you know, maybe there's something here for me. Like, and I mean, by here, I mean Nigeria. So I was really just doing my best um, to succeed for myself in Nigeria before like moving. But then in 2022, last year, my family came to the decision. I mean, everyone, we all decided that, you know, it was time for me to go. And even though I struggled with that decision, I knew that it was time for me to go. I struggled because I felt like I had already started building something for myself in Nigeria. I felt like I was already, you know, I had already become known as a beauty influencer especially in the beauty industry and i was trying to explore different other niches in like the beauty or like creation creator space in nigeria um and i just felt like i was still working and 
relocating or moving was going to disrupt that especially because i was moving to like a whole different country so i struggled a lot with that i also struggled with like leaving and moving away from my friends because my friends have been my friends for years like i'm that type of person who would make friends and be friends with them after 10 years and this is how it has been like in every aspect of my life so the friends that i made in high school are still my friends right now the friends that i made in college university are still my friends right now you know so i've always been like that so i those were like the two major things that i struggled with and i know you guys are going to say did you not struggle with you know moving away from your family I did, but I already came to terms with the fact that I was not going to see them for, I don't know, however long, um, two months prior to moving. So in August, that was when I was sure that I was going to move. I already cried all the cry that I could cry. I crew, I cried, I crowed. Um, I thought about it every day in August and I felt so bad and I feel like I, like I was over it. Um, I knew that I would communicate with them and all of that even though they were not going to be there with me I I just had already come to terms with the fact that I was not going to see them so I did not struggle with that I mean for the longest but then one day I talked to my friend who relocated like two years ago I told her that I know that I I'm supposed to move but like, how do I leave everything that I have already built in Nigeria to move to like a completely different country where I had no idea of how things would go or if things would even go well for me. Um, basically like move to a country that I was starting all over again, like a baby, like a complete baby. And she said to me that if you're moving to a better country, everything that you've built in Nigeria, you would be able to do times 10 of that and when she said that to me it clicked I was like you know what that's so true and so I, I I kept that with me till I moved and I knew that I was not going to not succeed I took that mindset with me and I said, if I was able to achieve all of these in Nigeria, even if I don't honestly do not think I achieved a lot. Um, I'm not one to, it's not even about not being one to blow my trumpet. I just don't ever see my successes um, because I'm always looking for the next best thing. So if I accomplish some goal or some, um, some achievement or a lifelong achievement or something if i take something off my bucket list or take something off my list of goals i'm not dwelling on that success for the longest time i would dwell on it for like you know the time that it has happened but then the next minute i'm moving on to the next thing so because of that i hardly see my successes um until someone points it out to me so i I just said to myself that if I was able to come this far in Nigeria, then I would probably most likely be able to do even better if I relocated. And so I kept that mindset with me. Um, it was hard leaving my friends. I would say that for sure. I remember being on the phone with one of my friends and I told her and then we were just talking and she just started crying. She literally paused and just burst into tears. And I was like, don't cry. I could not, I just did not want anyone to cry. And so because of that, every time my friends and I talked about me moving and they said something like, I'll miss you. I'll always say something like, I'm coming back or you're coming to join me or I'll still see you. I'll never say, I'm, I'll miss you too. Or I just never wanted to entertain the goodbyes. And so, <laughs> I found out that my friends were planning to do a surprise send-off for me some way. <laughs> um, and I remember telling my other friend that I did not want a send-off because I just did not. And then I found out that my friends were planning a send-off and I literally texted the people that I felt like were going to be the organizers and I said, please guys, don't do a send-off for me. 
the truth is i did not want to say goodbye i did not want to say goodbye to my friends i did not want to say goodbye to my family i did not want to say goodbye to the life that i had in nigeria basically because i felt like i was going to come back i felt like i was still very connected um to my life in nigeria because it made me feel whole like i had a really good life in nigeria um but i needed it was about time that i moved i needed to go so i struggled a lot with that and it's also kind of my way of coping because i knew that if i said goodbye i was going to cry i hate goodbyes i i rather do i will see you soon or see you later than goodbye i hate goodbyes and i feel like another thing that also made me more comfortable with relocating was the fact that I had already started working with international brands. And last year, I had only recorded working with one Nigerian brand, just one Nigerian brand. And I worked with several other international brands. So most of the brands I had worked with the year that I relocated were international brands. And I, if I was already becoming established in like the international niche or community i felt like you know moving there would make me more grounded and rooted i also had struggles with like receiving money or receiving payments from brands because like you know um the financial the means of receiving international funds in nigeria is very stressful because we don't really have that much access to easier forms of receiving money um, so you have to open a dollar account, you have to have the money sent to you in dollars, or you have to have the money sent to somebody who has a US PayPal account or a pay an international PayPal account, and then they have to send the money to you through some other platform, some other like transfer, finance, some other money transfer platform then it gets to your bank you have to wait for like five days and then you have to go to the bank to extract the money and then you have to look for some exchange person to exchange the money for you look it was just a lot and because i was working with mostly international brands that was my main struggle and i said to myself that if moving to the united states was going to make all of this easier for me easier for me then i was going to do it so I think like a lot of the experiences or where I was situated in life last year made me accommodate the thought of or like the reality of moving. And so I said, you know what? It's going to happen. And then it happened. The plan was actually to go to school, but I made the decision to experience life in the United States before school. So. I wanted to work. I wanted to know what it felt like to be in the labor market in, my, in America. I wanted to know what it felt like to earn money in America, to work for my money. And by working, I don't mean like, cause I was already working and earning dollars, right? But I wanted to be in the environment of working physically. Um, I just wanted to experience everything. I wanted to know what the work, work life was in America. I wanted to know how how it felt to have a life in America on your own and like build yourself before going to school. Cause I felt like if I went to school, I was going to be controlled by school and I did not want to be controlled by school. Um, I wanted to have at least some form of control over like my life um, here for at least the first year or like first two years and then I can go to school. So I wanted to be grounded. I wanted to be rooted. I wanted to experience a lot of things and I wanted to be aware of my surroundings. And just know what America was like before before then going to school. So um, that's why I decided to work. I still have school in view. I definitely want to do my master's in clinical psychology. And I'm definitely, you know, working towards that. But I feel like I just want to work first. I'm like, at least make some money. Um, establish myself, build myself, be in the system before then going to school. Life really started for me, I would say, when um, I started working and that's what I'm going to say. I started working in the month of May or June. I started working in the month of 
May. Wait, is it May or June? I actually don't remember. I think I started working in the month of June. Honestly, let's just say June because at this point I can't remember. I started working in the month of June and that's when life for me really started. That's when I was able to like interact with more people on a day-to-day -day basis. That's when I was able to put in the work with the expectation of same results at the end. And by results, I mean like success and progress in my place of work, you know, earning my full eight hours of work um, and earning my money at the end of the week or bi-weekly. I work in a therapy clinic for kids with autism or children with autism. Um, and I took a one month training that then led me to taking the exam that I passed. So right now I am a licensed or registered behavior technician. And then I also work a second job. I work at Sephora. I feel like you guys should already know that. <laughs> I work at Sephora. It has been my dream job. I just, I wanted to work with or at Sephora. I just wanted to be affiliated with Sephora. I talked about this with my friend two, three years ago. Um, one day she just told me that she saw me and then she saw Sephora. She had been seeing me with Sephora. Her name is Karen. So Karen, if you're watching this, I never, for I never forgot that you told me that. It was just out of the blues one day that she just said, because I think we were praying together about things or we used to share our like goals or prayer points and everything. And I think she told me that she just saw a vision of me and Sephora. And at that time, I wasn't really thinking about Sephora because I didn't really see Sephora the way I started seeing Sephora last year. Um, but then she said that and I received it. I was like, okay. So fast forward to like, actually, let's rewind to when I applied to be added to the Sephora squad. I did not make it. Um, it was really sad. Honestly, I felt really distraught because I really wanted to you know be part of the Sephora squad I signed up for the Sephora squad so if you don't know what Sephora is Sephora is a global beauty retail store and it's amongst like the best I don't know where the rating is right now but I should be certain that it should be amongst the top three <laughs> I don't know how I just randomly remember that yesterday they, an they announced the um finalists of the sephora squad and i didn't get in but guess what that's okay i mean like i see every experience as a mouse as a milestone or as a stepping stone for me i did not get in i did wish that i got in or got picked you know as the finalist and then entered the squad but i didn't and that's fine that doesn't stop the opportunities that are coming my way and that have been coming my way like when i didn't make it i was like you know what maybe this is maybe not this year maybe this is not what god wants for me at this time little did i know that i was going to apply randomly to working at sephora and someday randomly get a call and then boom become employed this whole story is in my sephora vlog or my the vlog basically the vlog i posted the vlog here so if you want to know all about what led me to becoming a Sephora employee that vlog is there where I talk explicitly about it so I hope you enjoy that one once you're done with this one before I talk about the successes and I know that I've already started talking about the successes let me talk about the struggles because I feel like everybody has this belief of once you've moved out of Nigeria you've made it like the moment you stepped out of Nigeria, you've made it. I don't want to know which other country you are at, you are at or you're moving to. But as long as it's not Nigeria, you've made it. And because of that, I can understand why people will think like that because of the situation of, of Nigeria, right? Um, but that has also kind of like clouded the minds of people and has made them forget that moving away from your country, because I... I see Nigeria as my country, even though I'm a citizen of the United States or a citizen of America. Nigeria is still my country. I'm Nigerian. It's my nationality. I carry Nigeria on my head everywhere I go. So I would never say I'm American. I say I'm Nigerian first. And then I'll be like, okay, I was born here, blah, blah, blah. But I basically spent all my life in Nigeria. Leaving your country after 
20 something year 20 something years of life i'm moving to a completely new country where you have zero idea of the culture zero idea of the way of life even as little as the food the change in food the change in taste the change in atmosphere the change in weather the change in dressing it's a lot and this is even the least everything that i've listed is the list of the struggles that you go through when you've relocated it's amazing to move to like a developed country where things are actually working or to move to a country where things are working working better than where, where you're coming from but it's it's a lot of struggle it's a lot when i tell you that the struggle is here it choke um and on this channel i always try my possible best to be as vulnerable as i can be you know i'm not intentionally trying to be vulnerable or show you the stuff ahead side of you know relocating um but i try to be as honest as possible and when i tell you that all that glitters is not gold it's not so i'm going to start with all the struggles and i'm glad that i tried my possible best to vlog every of my major experiences here so you know meeting my family that i hadn't met for the longest time to then you know starting to become a content creator again because i took one whole month off to kind of like adjust myself to like the whole surrounding and get get accustomed to everything and then you know becoming aware of my surroundings and then i started applying to jobs A lot of jobs said no to me um i would go for interviews and i would come back and you know expecting to get a text from whatever company i went for um because they usually text they usually know when they want to hire you like immediately um and then i'll go home and heartbreak i would not get anything i'll constantly check my emails for offer letters or like job approvals and i'll see declines denials I made sure that I recorded all of that here. It was a struggle. I started applying to jobs actively from the month of, I think, January up until March. In March, I got a job offer and I finally posted this video. If you guys remember this video. So here I am telling you guys that I got a job. <gasps> Do you know that I've actually just deeped it, that I actually have a job? I've not said it to myself like this since I got the offer and I got the offer like two weeks ago. And everyone has been asking me, are you excited? You don't seem excited. You don't look excited. You don't sound excited. But I actually am. I've just never said it to myself. And now that I'm saying it to myself, I'm actually deeping that I have a proper nine to five job in this country you guys have been with me all through the process like there were times where i didn't even show you like oh uh, nah there were times where i was exhausted there were times where i was overwhelmed there were times where i would just cry because i applied to i did not know that the job hunting game is brutal nobody warned me so i've never actively gone job hunting or actively applied for jobs and I just thought that you know it would be easy for me to get a job you know just apply if you have qualifications any company that wants you can just you know reach out to you and hire you immediately i didn't know that it was more than that i applied to 57 jobs on one application alone i remember coming here i was so happy because i finally got my job you know my dream job i was going to be working as a um case manager for you know patients who have mental health struggles or individuals who have mental health struggles i got the offer letter i signed it and after getting my job in march i was i was scheduled to resume on the 1st of april i was scheduled to resume on the 3rd of april so that was the next month and so because i knew that i had a lot of space i decided that day that or that week that i was going to travel to see my friends this is not supposed to be a travel prep vlog but welcome to my travel prep vlog yesterday i happened to have bought a ticket to fly somewhere 
I saw this post actually after buying the tickets minutes later I saw this post about your 20s being the time where you're supposed to experiment and explore and not live in fear basically so that's what I'm doing I traveled to Texas to see my friends from high school that have been anticipating this move because they moved a while back but I was always stalling the move and I had to do uni in Nigeria and then even after uni I stalled a lot so I knew that I needed to see them. We're so excited to see each other. We're so eager. So I just impulsively planned that trip and I went to Texas. So I went there, you know, being secure and knowing that, oh, I already got a job, you know, I was scheduled to come back on the 1st of April. I was scheduled to come back on the 2nd of April, which was a Sunday. And the 3rd of April was a Monday, which was the day that I was supposed to resume. <sighs> on the 2nd of April, I expected to get, you know, a letter or a mail from them telling me what time to come, what time to do, like what time was the onboarding and blah, 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 blah. I did not get anything that Sunday. So the next day, which was a Monday, because I knew the location of the company, I decided to go there, even though I knew that I hadn't received anything from them. I went there. And I got the biggest shock of my life. They told me that I had not been scheduled for onboarding that day and that um, I would have to go back and wait for a mail from my hiring manager or the person that was assigned to you know, my case. And so I went back. And then an hour later, I got a mail from her and then she said that they could not send me an, they could not give me a day of onboarding because they were yet to receive my transcript from my school. I had sent my original transcript, my unofficial transcript to them, but was waiting for them to receive, they were waiting to receive my official transcript. And if you're school in Nigeria, especially if you went to a federal school, I went to the University of Lagos, there's a process that you have to follow. You have to actively follow that process. I did not follow that process and the moment I started following the process, it took a lot of time. There was a lot of back and forth because I needed to go back and correct some things. I needed to, you know, send, I needed to pay some agency. It's a board. It's called WES. I don't know if you moved to the United States, you would know like you have to send your transcript if you're in my position or if you went to a federal school that does not give out transcripts like by hand or official transcripts by hand or in the mail you would need to pay some certification board to have them request from your school to pull out your transcript and then that board would directly send your transcript to your school or your workplace all of that took a lot of time and in that space we had to wait over a month i think i had to wait about two months for my transcript to finally be sent to the certification board that would then finally send it to you know the company it took two months but the company was lenient enough with me um they waited and i'm so i'm grateful to them because like no company waits that long but they waited for me for two months i want to believe that all of these things happened the way it happened because my hiring manager or the company liked me too much that they wanted me to start immediately that they forgot or they left out some of these important information before sending me the offer letter. When my transcript was finally ready, I found out that I needed a driver's license and a car to work at the company. Having a driver's license was not the problem. The problem was having a car. And immediately I got that mail. I just knew that, you know what? I'm not going to get this job. I'm not going to start working here after all. And that was like the biggest heartbreak that I experienced in in this country or like moving here because I had already gotten the offer letter. I had gotten the job. And then the problem at first was my transcript. I was in the process of, you know, sending my transcript to them before they dropped the second bomb on me. And I was like, there was no, there was absolutely no way that I could rush getting a car. And I had already waited two months. 
in that moment, in that whole, like when everything was happening, I had already made my, you know, video of like how I got a job, had posted it. Everybody was congratulating me. I was literally going through that whole situation and like randomly I'll just see congratulations pop up on that YouTube video. It just made me even feel worse than I felt because I felt like I was not genuine enough and even though that was not the case because I did not see this coming, I did not see you know the other glitches in the way before I had posted that video. But I prayed to God about it and God wanted me to, to post the video when I posted the video. So I posted it. Till today, I don't know why he wanted me to post that video. Maybe he wanted me to post that video for someone. I don't know. But that video where I said to you guys or where I told you guys that I got the job, I did not get the job at the end of the day because I had to send them an email telling them that I moved here recently. There's no way that I can rush getting a car. So I had to forfeit that job and I had to start the job search again. When I tell you that job searching in this country is is the ghetto. It is like I I don't even know how best to say, but it is brutal. Like nobody send your mama, nobody send your papa. It's brutal. So I had to start my job search journey again. Um I started applying to jobs again, and when I tell you that. I did not believe I would get any job because I was just getting disapprovals, getting declined, and I was just in low mood. So from April up until May, I was just applying to jobs reluctantly. I was applying to like 10 jobs in a day, every day. I don't know if I said it the other day. I think I, I said it that um, I was already feeling kind of burnt out and overwhelmed because I had been applying to jobs and... Some were not forthcoming. Some decided to go on with other, you know, candidates. And uh, I went for one. I was so close to getting one. And because I, like, I didn't have a license or don't know how to drive, that was a problem. And I didn't get the job. So that really affected, like, my mood coming into this week. And so if anyone asked me about the job, I even stopped talking about the interviews that I had. And then I was just not enthusiastic about it. I had an ultimatum. Because I really wanted to work and I need, I really needed to work and make some money, some other form of money for myself, even though I was making money as a content creator. So I was given this ultimatum that by the end of, what month was it? By the end of April, if I hadn't gotten a job or I hadn't gotten an offer, I would have had to start working at McDonald's or some random random eat out place and that's not what i wanted for myself i'm just going to put this in here disclaimer there's nothing wrong in working in mcdonald's or zazby's or or wendy's or um chick-fil-a but i knew the vision that i had for myself when i moved here and it was not mcdonald's so that ultimatum bothered me a lot because one I knew that it was not what I wanted for myself and two, I knew that I needed to find a job and I needed something. I needed to start making money basically because I had already been here over five months, about six months and I was still struggling with finding a job. So on the, on the last day of April, I got a call from some workplace or I got a call from one of my interviewers from one of the you know jobs I had applied to and they told me on that call that they were going to offer me the job and I know that I was so happy because I told them that you know I would like to get back to them but I was so happy because like look at how God was working on the last day of the month you know I finally got an offer so I called my uncle and my aunt who live here um, to you know tell them about the job it was a marketing job and blah 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 because obviously I didn't understand anything about the the job like the job the career industry or the career field in this country and so when I talked to them about it um, I told them about the pay you know the benefits blah 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 there were no benefits anyway um, I told them about, about the pay and everything that um, the job entailed and it was it was basically a job that was going to have me spending more money than making more money because the pay was not much 
and I wasn't getting any benefits. So no health benefits, no medical insurance, no dental insurance, no visual, visual insurance, nothing. I was literally going to be coming to work and I was going to be paid on commission or I was going to be paid on performance. Um, so that was, that was just not, it was not the job for me, especially for someone who just started. And so when I got off the call with my uncle and aunt, I just, I just put my head down and I said, Holy Spirit, help me. And I will never forget that day. After saying that, it was not even a prayer. It was just Holy Spirit, help me. Because I was confused. When I tell you that I knew not what to do, I knew I was confused. Um, so I got up, got ready for the gym or got ready to go to the gym because I was going through it and I needed to release. Um, I was walking out of then Adora's apartment when just at the spot where the wi-fi was going to be disconnected i got a call and it was so weird because i was like why is it at this spot like i was about to take my foot down one step and the moment i took like if i had taken my foot down that step that call would not have come in because the wi-fi would have disconnected and then i got the call and it bothered me because i was like that is so random anyway i took a step back and went closer to where i knew the wi-fi would be connected and i picked the call, I saw that it was my school mother from high school, Pamela. She called me and she said, um, this, the Holy Spirit placed me in her mind and then she just wanted to pray for me. And then she prayed for me and she basically told me what she saw in a vision. She saw a door and she saw that I was trying to come out, come, like, come out of the door and there was something blocking the door. And basically she translated it to, to meaning that um, I'm trying to do something, but I'm being restricted. The enemy is trying to restrict me or the devil is trying to restrict me. And the more that restriction is there, the more I may succumb to it. And so she needed to pray for me. And so I told her about everything, like my job search, the ultimatum that I had, the call that I just got this morning about like for a job offer, blah, blah, blah. And she told me, you don't have to work in McDonald's if that's not what God wants for you. And I knew in my spirit and my soul that even though I wanted to make money in this country, even though I wanted to, you know, you know, work and like interact with people and like see the country for myself, I knew it was not going to start at McDonald's. But that call was the start of my blessing. And that's how I'm just going to say because I needed help. And that call came at the the most pressing time and I would I would still never ever forget how that happened and how that played. After that call, I went to the gym. I was so happy. I was like, God, thank you. And I remember that I prayed that one prayer or I just made that one statement. Holy Spirit, help me. Guys, I'm dressed for the gym. No, I'm not wearing this. I'm going to take this off. Actually, let me go. I was like yes guys guess what I'm not working at McDonald's um yeah I told my family because I'm like you know what I'm in this struggle on my own um I understand that everyone is trying to look out for the best for me but at the end of the day who is going to be in it me if I work somewhere that the spirit has not called me or if I if I am somewhere that the spirit has not called me to be or that God has not called me to be who is going to suffer for it me not you so I decided that I know that you guys, you know, my family has given me this ultimatum because they are looking out for me and they want me to like make money for myself, but I'm not taking it. And that was the end of the story. So I started applying to jobs again with like a 
like I was better, I was happier applying to jobs, knowing fully well that I had the backing of the Holy Spirit and God had already said, had spoken his word over me that if this is the job I want, I'm going to get it. And I feel like that whole period from January up until May, God placed me in the season of waiting. If you have been in the season of waiting, you will understand what I mean. It is, it is excruciatingly frustrating. It can be. It's like you want to move, but you can't move. You just have to wait because that's what God has said. And if you, you can't do anything but wait. So if you're somebody that you're always looking for the next thing to do, or you're always looking for the next way to be busy or the next move to make, or you just want to be successful, you have a lot of dreams, you have a lot of goals, and that you want it to be out there, but you need to make the move. And God has said for you to wait. You will wait. You better wait. But that waiting will be so frustrating. But there's really absolutely nothing you can do because guess what? You have to wait in obedience. And so I waited. I will do I will do job interview. I will cry. Like there'll be some days I'll just be doing the dishes and I'll be randomly crying. I just start tears will just start trickling down from my eyes. Um but glory be to God that same month. Randomly I just got an email from the job, the job, the clinic that I'm working at right now. And they scheduled me for an interview and i had the first interview and the first question i asked them was do i need a driver's license do i need a car and they said no you just need to be able to get yourself to work every day and that's it and i got the job i've been working there for four months now i think four or five months i i've actually lost count but i've been working there um for over three months um and the next month um, I randomly applied to Sephora and I got the job offer and I've been working at Sephora as well and then the next month I got my car and then the next month I moved into my apartment so I know that this car information is very new and very fresh because I've not even self-launched it or I've not done anything because <laughs> I don't know so you guys tell me do you want me to launch this car because honestly I can't be bothered at this point again because it's just a lot going on that I've not even had the chance to move back and like present everything. But in that moment where I was not being like I wasn't creative, like I had one break, one unplanned break. And I know I talked about it briefly in my apartment vlog. Um, but in that moment, a lot was happening, and you know, some of it was getting the car, moving into my apartment, and just like basically creating life for myself. So you guys. Should we soft launch the car? By the way, her name is... Wait, can anyone guess? If you know me, you know I always like to name everything that I have or everything that I own. So who wants to guess the name of my car? I'm going to give you a hint. It starts with L. Um, That's all I'm going to give you. It starts with L, so guess the name of my car. So do you guys want me to soft launch the car? Should I just not bother? Because I don't know. Let me know. But basically, that's where we are now. Um, there's been a lot of tears. There's There's been a lot of crying. There's been a lot of struggles. I'm going to try to show you guys a little bit of everything in this compound video that I'll probably make for Instagram. But it's been a struggle. It's been tears, constant tears. It's been no's, disapprovals. Um, it's been a lot of losses um, It's also been a lot of gains, you know a lot of learning a lot of exploration a lot of growth as well. So like mental growth spiritual growth emotional growth It's been everything and I'm glad that you guys have been on this journey with me <laughs> I love you whenever I post content and I see you guys comment Glory, I started following you two years ago, three years ago. I've watched you grow. It's amazing because, yes, you guys have watched me grow. And I honestly love that you guys tell me that you've watched me grow. Because I don't see it until you guys see it. And then I start saying, oh, oh my God, that's actually true. In two years, like two years ago, I was doing this XYZ. This year, I'm now doing this. Two years ago, I was praying for XYZ. This year, I'm literally living in... My prayer points so um 
this is the life update video i plan on showing you guys more of this new life because i mean it's it's really it's really a new life right now i'm in my own apartment finally an apartment that i can call my own a home that i can call my own um i have my car that i can drive to certain places and like if a job if i want to switch jobs nobody will tell me you need a car a driver's license um because hello <laughs> but before all of these a lot of things happened and i will say that honestly those struggles have made me get to where i am today because if i did not have that struggle with that job's main requirement of being that i needed to have a car I would not have been making efforts into making a car, getting a car. I would not have been working my butt off. I would not have been saving as much as I am, even though like I'm a big saver more than I'm a spender, but I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have just had the mindset that I have right now. So all of the struggles that I had in the past from, you know, being in this country have then brought me to where I am today. And I'm grateful for the tears, for the cries, for the nose, for the disapprovals, for the for the discouragement, for the everything, even as low as people telling me, oh, Goli babe, you know, you just moved to the United States and you have Nigerian credentials. I'm not sure that you can actually get a proper nine to five job. I heard that a lot. Um, but against all odds, against all odds, God did it against all odds. You guys, I did not cry. I'm so happy I did not cry. It's my one year anniversary. Um, I'm filming this video on the 22nd of October. So obviously, um, I still have three weeks to go. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do on that day, but I'm going to cry a lot because I don't know how I'm here. But thank you so much, guys, for sticking with me. Um, right now, I'm picturing myself last year when I was doing my, you know, introduction video of relocating and thanking you guys for sticking with me um, towards the ending. But thank you. Like, thank you. Thank you. I just, I would never, ever, ever get tired of saying thank you. Thank you so much, guys. That was literally last year when I moved here. I was saying thank you to you guys for sticking with me. And here I am a year after still thanking you guys for sticking with me. We've come a long way. Um, I would never, ever, ever stop saying that I'm grateful to God. It's not, not by my power. None of this is me. It is all God. And I'm also very grateful to you guys for all the love, all the encouragement. I would never stop saying thank you. That's one thing about me. I would always, always, always find a way to say thank you. So this is it. <laughs> Wish me happy one year anniversary in the comments. Um, I'm going to get ready for work now and leave here smiling like a little baby because I finally filmed this video for you guys so thank you for getting here thank you for watching this video till the end if you did and if you did not hmm, if you watch this video till the end you know that i have mad 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 love for you and until next time guys bye